good evening children this is my sixth and last video on our lesson digestion and absorption in my previous video i had discussed about the physiology of digestion we focused on the digestion of proteins carbohydrates fats and the nucleic acids and the same went under the following headings digestion in buccal cavity then in stomach small intestine and the large intestine here so it dealt with all the enzymatic reactions that form the physiology part of your digestive reactions today we will start with the new topic that is absorption of digested food substances what is absorption absorption is the process by which various end products of digestion pass through the cells of mucosa into the blood or lymph to be transported to various body cells absorption when we talk in the elementary canal we can discuss under four headings number 1 buccal cavity and esophagus where no appreciable absorption takes place so mainly absorption uh, takes place in the stomach small intestine where 90% of food is absorbed and then in the large intestine so let us go one by one as i said uh, no appreciable absorption in mouth cavity or the buccal cavity and esophagus but when the food comes to stomach water alcohol inorganic salts and some amount of glucose they are absorbed by the stomach wall as the food reaches the small intestine here about 90% of absorption is completed all right now for this purpose the absorptive surface area of intestine we know is greatly enlarged how is it greatly enlarged number 1 the length we know is some 6.25 cm there are finger like pro processes here if we see this a villus now these finger like processes they are on the lining of the intestinal wall and they also have microscope uh, microscopic projections called as microvilli on the free surface of the epithelial cells of the mucosa that line the villi right so all these structures they increase the absorptive surface so what happens in the small intestine in the duodenum iron and calcium is absorbed then in the second part that is jejunum monosaccharides fatty acids glycerol vitamins and water are absorbed then as the food reaches the ileum vitamins like vitamin b12 bile salts and water they are absorbed now the food reaches the large intestine here some absorption occurs in large intestine what all does this happen here mostly it is water then sodium small amounts of other ions and the products of bacterial digestion which are vitamin b1 vitamin b2 and k that is vitamin k they are all absorbed in the large intestine and then after this the undigested food is converted into feces so this is the summary of absorption remember children we'll discuss it under four headings and here the structure of villus see how the absorption is taking place if you see the cholesterol it is absorbed by diffusion when we see the fats that is a fatty acid and glycerol they are also being taken up by the process of diffusion and when we talk about the disaccharides so in this fructose here it is absorbed no fructose it is the next product which is being absorbed by facilitated trans diffusion then the galactose which is absorbed by active transport polysaccharides they break down to glucose which is taken up by active transport and proteins change into peptides and amino acids which are taken by active transport so finally this is absorbed into the body now what happens when the food is absorbed the next process is assimilation so what does the term assimilation mean assimilation means that the food that has been absorbed now it is incorporated into the 
tissue cells so that finally it becomes the integral part of the cytoplasm and it is used for purposes like uh, energy, growth and repair. So how does the process of absorption take place? We will again talk in points. See here, three headings for assimilation. By definition, I told you, it is the incorporation of food material into the tissue cells that become an integral part of cytoplasm and is used for energy, growth and repair. So there are three things that we will talk for assimilation, fats, monosaccharides and amino acids. Now fats, what happens with the fat molecules? The glycerol and fatty acids that are the last product of fat digestion, they are absorbed in the lacteals and distributed to body by blood in the form of chylomicrons. I like to show you here. See here. These are the chylomicron molecules, right, which are uh, absorbed in the lacteals. So you can see how this is being absorbed in the lacteals and now being transported to the body cells. So what happens further with these fat molecules? In the body cells, when they are reaching, they are converted into fat which is stored in adipose tissue and this is utilized only when there is a metabolic need and demand by the body cells. Right? So that is the assimilation. So once the last products of fat digestion are these, they are absorbed by the lacteals and now they become a permanent part of our body that is in the form of adipose tissue and will be required only when they are in demand or need. Coming next is the assimilation of monosaccharides. What are monosaccharides? They are the final products of carbohydrate digestion. Now these enter the blood and they are distributed to every body cell where glucose is metabolized to produce energy for life processes. All right. The extra glucose, what is used in life processes, fine. But the extra glucose will be converted into glycogen. Right? So this glycogen which is stored in the liver and then it is also stored in the muscle cells and the stored glycogen is utilized during conditions of stress. All right? Then excess of amino acids and fats also they are converted into glycogen for storage. So this is like the excess we are talking of fats and amino acids they will also be converted to glycogen for the storage purpose. So this is the fate of the last product of carbohydrate digestion that is monosaccharides that how it is stored up into the liver and muscle cells as glycogen. Coming to assimilation of amino acids or the last products of protein digestion, amino acids they are used to synthesize two things. Number one, structural proteins and to enzymes. We all know children that all enzymes they are proteinaceous. So amino acids they are used to make structural proteins and enzymes. These structural proteins they are used for purposes like growth and repair. All right. Whereas the enzymes they are used to catalyze various metabolic reactions. Now in liver there is a very important process that takes place and we call, is, call this process as deamination. The term de means to get rid of or to remove. What to remove? The poisonous or dangerous amine group. Amine group is the NH2 group. So this has to be removed, right? And who removes this? The liver by the process of deamination. Now ammonia which is produced as the product by the reaction uh, that is excess amino acids, they are converted to ammonia and carbon dioxide by the deamination process. In this, the amino group is removed. Now, these two they combine the products of deamination, ammonia and carbon dioxide, they will combine to form urea. What is the fun uh, formula of urea, children? NH2.CONH2. So, urea you can know is a com combination product between ammonia and carbon dioxide and this urea will be excreted by the kidney in the form of urine. Similarly, now once the amine group has been removed, now the deaminated organic molecules 
and amino acids they will be converted into glucose and then into fats for storage so that means after the removal of this poisonous group which is thrown out as the waste by the kidney the leftover deaminated organic molecules will change into glucose and then into fats and they will be stored up so this is the summary of the assimilation of digested food materials so let us see what all things we have done to complete this part today the uh, beginning of this video i started with the process of absorption where i talked about the absorption of food basically in the stomach small intestine and large intestine because here in buccal cavity and esophagus there is no appreciable absorption then after this it was the assimilation of digested food or how it becomes a permanent and integral part of our cytoplasm and body cells so this goes under three headings fats monosaccharides and the amino acids or the proteins with this we finish our chapter on digestion and absorption i would like to show you the syllabus that we have completed everything here under this topic this is here digestion and absorption elementary canal and digestive glands role of digestive enzymes peristalsis digestion absorption and assimilation of proteins carbohydrates and fats this i have taken today then calorific values of proteins carbohydrates and fats this was taken in the first video egestion the nutritional and digestion disorders calorific value of carbohydrates fats proteins per gram then structure and functions of digestive organs and their associated glands types of dentition thecodont heterodont diphyodont then dental formula of humans diagram of digestive system with correct position of organs and associated glands and diagrammatic representation ts of gut showing four layers so children they are emphasizing two diagrams from the beginning i am say, uh, saying you to, uh, saying to all of you that kindly draw and practice once again i like to show you before we sum up this chapter the first diagram is again being emphasized is the digestive system and the second diagram is this the ts of elementary canal or the gut so this you must be able to draw and label very well the others are explanatory histology of individual organs they are not required physiology of digestion and absorption of food this i have done today definition of bolus peristalsis so when they say definition you need not go into the details bolus peristalsis deglutition emulsification and assimilation of digested food disorders of the digestive system protein energy malnutrition pem indigestion constipation vomiting jaundice and diarrhea so every word of this syllabus i have completed in case you have any queries children you are certainly free to ask and please do not leave any stones unturned to clear your doubts that's all for just now in my next video i will start with our next lesson and that will be classification of the animal kingdom thank you